hi good morning and welcome to this class in today's tutorial video we shall be looking at Kekov's laws and we shall be looking at the Kekov's current law and Kekov's voltage law we shall be making use of it to solve this problem before us when you have uh, two sources of emf as we see here two volts and five volts it becomes uh, challenging when we would want to find the current that flows through this circuit you notice this circuit is in series connection so it's expected that the same current passes through so you have this uh, this uh, resistor this resistor is uh, 10 ohms the resistor here is 10 ohms so the question is find the current that flows in the circuit so ordinarily using ohm's law v equals ir can solve this if we have uh, only one source of emf in that case we sum the series resistances and uh, make i subject of formula i equals v upon r then we resolve and find our current in that case you have only one source of emf and uh, this will become the equivalent of resistance now in series. But in this type of problem, we have two sources of uh, EMF, two volts and five volts. How do we go about it? The Kirchhoff's law will help us do this. Now, what did Kirchhoff state? Kirchhoff has two laws. The first one is the current law, Kirchhoff's current law, and the second one is voltage law, Kekos voltage law. Now, how do we now make use of these laws to resolve this problem before us? The Kekos current law is based on the conservation of charge, while the Kekos voltage law is based on the conservation of energy. So, what did Kekos uh, current law state? It states that the sum of the current in a circuit that it is equal to what? Zero. The sum of current in a circuit that it should equal what? Zero. Or the sum of the current that if you have a, a junction like this, you have a junction, have a junction, let's say this is a the junction where uh, three or more wires meet then he's saying that the sum of the current that enters through this junction equals the sum that leaves the junction if we take the current that enters the junction let's say this is i the current that enters the junction and let's say this is i1 and this is i2 and this is entering and this is uh, leaving the junction. So he's saying that the sum of the current that enters this junction equals the sum that leaves the junction. So he's saying that the sum that enters equals the sum that leaves. And again, the side conversion we have to take note of here, we take it that the, the current that enters the junction should be positive and the current that leaves the junction should be negative. So we'll have something like this. We'll have uh, I equals minus I1 minus I2. So the sum of the currents that enters the junction equals the sum that leaves. So you make use of this, actually, when you want to resolve, uh, find maybe the current that enters the junction through this side, or the current that leaves the junction through this side, or the current that leaves the junction through this side. Otherwise, the statement of Kirchhoff's current law in this case now is the current that enters equals the current that leaves. This is I1 plus what? I2. But in this case now, we uh, took note of the convention. Let us just solve one example to illustrate this that I have said. So let us use this example to illustrate what I'm saying. 
So if this is a junction and I1 is entering this junction, you notice that I2 is leaving the junction. The question is, find the third current and the direction. So we can make use of uh, Kirchhoff's uh, current law to solve this. And the law says that the sum of the current that enters the junction should equal the sum that leaves. So in this case now, what we are going to have is, you have that I, this is I1, equals, uh, this is uh, I2 plus, we don't know what is here. But for us to be on the server side, we take this part, and the part we are going to take is that the sum of the currents in the circuit, the sum of the currents in the circuit should equal zero. The sum of the currents in the circuit should equal zero. In this case, the sum of the currents in the junction should equal zero. So we have that I1 plus I2 plus I3, which we don't know, and we don't know the direction, everything should equal what? Zero. And I1 is entering the junction, so it's positive. So sine plus I2 is leaving the junction, so it's negative. It's negative. Negative 4 plus I3. Everything should equal what? Zero. So going for that to solve, we have from here. Sine plus minus is a minus. Plus. I3 equals what? 0. 10 minus 4 is a 6. Plus I3 equals what? 0. Then we now see that I3 equals minus 6 ampere. So since the, the current is negative, it shows that it is a leaving the junction. Because if we find it as negative, we take it that it is what? Leaving the junction. So the current the magnitude of the current is 6 uh, ampere and is leaving the junction. So this is how to use uh, Kirchhoff's current law to resolve uh, problems. By taking note of this, that the sum of the current equals what? Zero. Or the sum of the current entering the junction equals the sum that leaves the junction. Now let us even check if it's zero. So the total sum of the currents entering the junction is 10. We have 10 ampere. And the sum leaving the junction is, so this is minus 6 minus 4. That is minus 10. You notice that everything is 0. So you can employ this when you want to uh, solve problems involving junction in a circuit. For instance, here, we don't have uh, a place where three or more wires meet. So we can uh, maybe resolve this type of problem using Kirchhoff's voltage law. Now let us see how we can use Kirchhoff's voltage law to solve this problem before us. Kirchhoff's voltage law, which is based on the conservation of energy, states that the sum of the EMF and the potential drop across this circuit element, this resistors in the circuit that everything should equal what zero. I repeat, it states that the sum of the EMF and the potential drop across the circuit elements that it should equal what zero. We shall see how this applies as it relates to this problem before us. Now let us look at the conventions. The convention is for you to solve problem using Kirchhoff's voltage law, you must identify a loop. A loop. A loop is just a closed path in a circuit. For instance, if I label this A, B, C, and D. So A, B, C, and D is a loop. So if you notice that in this problem, we just have one loop. So the first thing you need to do is to identify a loop. You can as well identify a junction. But as you can see, we just have two lines meeting. So we don't have three uh, or more lines. So let us just take this as a loop. 
The next thing you have to check again is the direction of the current. In this problem, we are given the direction of the current. See the direction of the current. And the sign convention we are going to follow is, we take it that when we are moving in the direction of the current, we have a voltage drop here across the resistor. Anytime we are moving in the direction of the current, we have a voltage drop. But anytime we are moving against the direction of the current, we have a voltage uh, lift. That is, the, vo this, the, vo the potential drop becomes positive. But if it is in the direction of the current, the potential drop becomes uh, negative. This is for the resistors. What of the source of EMF? The source of EMF. Anytime we are moving from the negative terminal of the cell to the positive terminal, we are moving uphill, so the potential here becomes positive. Anytime we are moving from the positive terminal to the negative terminal, we are moving downhill. The potential difference here becomes a negative. We shall now make use of this to resolve this problem, to find I, following from this. So when we are moving at uh, <clears throat> moving in this direction and we move this uh, we meet this resistor so since we are moving in the direction of the current we have a voltage drop here from ohm's law v equals ir so and the resistor here is 10 ohm and when we are moving in the direction of the current we, we say we have a voltage drop so it becomes negative the potential there becomes negative so you have negative of course the current that passes through the circuit is the same so i'm going to be making use of i so have negative uh 10 i because i is the current that flows through we keep moving we now meet this resistor again which is one ohm and we are moving in the direction of the current so the potential we have a potential drop here so in this case we have minus one ohm that is this is one ohm we have minus one i because i is the current minus one i this is current so i'm representing it minus one i then we meet a source of emf we are moving from the negative terminal the negative is the short one and the positive is the longer one we are moving from the negative to the positive so we have a potential uh, lift so we have positive potential here we are moving up here so we have plus five and notice again i'm not putting i here because this is just source of emf we're not talking of potential drop so you have plus five because we're moving from negative terminal to positive then we meet a resistor this resistor is in the direction of the flow of the current and in the direction in which we are moving so we have a potential drop again so you have minus 2i then we meet another source of emf but in this case we are moving down here from the the positive terminal to the negative terminal so we have uh, negative uh, 2 negative 2 so we have summed the the emf and the potential drop across this resistor and according to kekov he said that every show, everything should equal what zero so collecting like terms if we collect like terms you notice that you have minus 13 i that is minus 10 minus 1 minus 2 is minus 13 so you have plus 5 minus 2 is plus 3 so everything should equal what zero so if we make i subject of the formula what do we have you have uh we have um minus we have minus 13 i equals minus 3 if this cancels what do we have you have that i equals 3 upon 13 
and if we uh, divide this what are we having so if we divide this we have 0 0.23 ampere so the current that flows through the circuit is 0 0.23 ampere and we're able to do this using the Kirchhoff's voltage law this is just involving a simple a single loop if you have enjoyed this video do well to um, subscribe subscribe to the channel then you can invite your friends in this channel we teach uh, sciences basically for now we are teaching mathematics and physics so we teach mathematics and physics for uh, high school students and university students so if you have found this video helpful you can share it with your friends don't forget to comment comment on the areas you would want us to do again to treat again in physics and uh, in mathematics where you find it challenging you can join our membership in this membership you you can check the description you click join and see the offer we have for membership but meanwhile you can subscribe to the channel turn on the notification bell so that each time we upload video you get to see them have a wonderful day ahead in our next video we shall be looking at how we can find uh, currents in a circuit involving more than one loop enjoy your day